Welcome to Joy Businesses Year in Review. How would you describe 2023 from the perspective of the economy to the business space? What are all those who are in this area saying about this year, how it went? What are some of the top issues, the challenges, and how can they position themselves to lessen the challenges that 2024 will present? This is our business review 2023 as we we'll engage in an economist, a business person and those in the trading area on how they look at the year from the economic space to business. What should be done to ensure that the challenges that hit them in 2023 is not repeated in 2024? What are some of the top issues for 2023 when you look at the economy, the finance, trading and all these other areas will be up for discussion here on the business review 2024 a joy business production we'll be right back after this break as we bring our guests along to join us for this discussion Welcome back to Joy Business or Business Review 2023. What are some of the top issues for 2023 when it comes to the economy, when it comes to the finance space, when it comes to banking, trading, agriculture? What are some issues that happened in 2023 that for you it was very, very important? And how can we also ensure that we are not hit with those challenges that affected businesses? and even those in the other sectors of the economy. In studio, I'm joined by the Guta uh, president, of course, Dr. Joseph. He's here with us in studio. And, Doc, thank you so much all for you for joining us. And also via Zoom, Professor Peter Corte. He is an economist and the director of the Institute of Statistical Social and Economic Research. He'll be joining us via Zoom. And also the chief executive of the Association of Ghana Industries, Seth Chumakabwa, he will also be joining us via Zoom. And also, we'll be engaging the president of the Hotel Association, of course, uh, Dr. Akanyameke. He will also be joining us uh, via Zoom. And Edward Karawe, he is the general secretary of the General Agricultural Workers Union, also will be connecting us uh, via Zoom. And also, Seth Chumakabwa, he is the chief executive of the Association of Ghana Industries. These distinguished gentlemen connecting via Zoom and also here in studio, of course, uh, the president of Guta. Interesting times, some would say. And also, uh, Mr. Pepra as well. Professor Pepra will be also be joining us also uh, via Zoom. He is a financial economist as well. And also be joining us with a perspective all the way from U.S. Uh, via Zoom in getting his thoughts about the Ghanaian economy, the financial space, and the banking sector. So, these are the distinguished persons who are joining us for our business review 2023 here at Joy Business. Let me first start with you, um, the Guter President. Interesting times, of course, uh, for businesses. And how would you, for you, describe 2023? Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Mm. But as we all know, um, the effects of the exchange rate mm. of the last quarter mm. of year 2022. Mm. Um, ushered us into a very difficult new year of mm. 2022, uh, mm. 2023. Three, sorry. Because, you know, um, our capitals have been depleted around that time, mm. 2022, about 52%. Mm. And then the effects of the exchange rate has also led to high rate of inflation. Mm. The cost of borrowing have also gone up mm. because the uh, monetary policy rate mm. also kept going up. Mm. So this is what, uh, where we were ushered into mm. the year mm. um, 2023. Mm. Mm. At that, around that same time, mm. um, Ghana was entering the IMF program mm. Mm. and actually the conditionalities that goes with it also led to the introduction of mm. three, what we call the obnoxious taxes. Mm. Um, that came to compound um, the high cost of doing business mm. that we were encountering. Mm, mm, mm. But before, before I even get into the fine details of your top issues for this year as well, I mean, it might be early days yet, but how would you describe the, the Christmas holidays in terms of 
sales and trading as well. How has it been like for, for your members? Has it been a good one? Uh, you saw the traffic in town and people rushing to uh, shopping malls and market areas and all the rest. How would you describe this season in terms of business? And that's why um, people always say that if we do our things right, I yeah. think the Ghanaian economy is very resilient mm. and it can withstand uh, most pressures and mm. all that. Because business have been normal. Mm. Um, um, and I, I must say, uh, uh, for the fact that because our capitals have been weighing down mm. during the course of the year and, mm. and the last quarter of 2022, as I've been saying, mm. um, people would have in, um, imported even more. Yeah. Um, but that aside, sales was very okay. Means mm. that if we do our things right, mm. the coming year will see mm. uh, good. Some, some clarity, okay meaning or good because, listen, I, I, it might not be scientific. We saw the traffic that were leading to a lot of these markets and all the rest, and, and some were saying so that... No, normally, um, uh, uh, business um, is relative, mm. and some are uh, uh, very related to the Christmas itself. Mm. And I must say, those that are related to Christmas, you see that those who do the hampers will have to buy the provisions and all that mm. um, to do all those things. And definitely, um, there have been a boom in the, those sectors mm. that... Uh, is uh, uh, that commensurate with the kind of economy that we have now? Interesting. Let me put it that way. You've spoken about the economy. Let me bring in Professor Peter uh, Corti. He is an economist. And Prof, let's, if you look at the, the broader economy, one would say that how would you, as an economist and director of ESA, uh, describe 2023? Interesting one, an IMF program, a debt exchange program, inflation and all the rest. But let me just allow you to do the talking, Prof. Hi, uh, good afternoon to your uh, distinguished panel members and uh, good afternoon to your distinguished viewers. I think we've had mixed episodes. Um, the first quarter of 2023 was quite a challenging one. Then gradually things started picking up in 2020, the second half and then the third quarter uh, gradually up to the current. You know. So we've had mixed episodes. A very challenging mm -hmm. era, and then an era or one or two quarters where things started uh, picking up. Uh, some have described as turning the corner, but I, I'm not sure whether we really turn the corner. But is it so that for me is 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 the, the way I can describe the uh, 2023 the economy. We had debt exchange program, we had IMF program, we had a very difficult, painful debt exchange um, exercise mm -hmm. where. People lost income. The banking sector, especially, lost so much um, in terms of interest income, and they are still paying for the effects of the debt exchange. Um, it's also feeding into interest payments, feeding into their cost of operations. Um, we saw very high inflation rates. Um, food inflation. It will shock you that even the food growing areas. Food inflation were much higher than you will find in Accra. Yeah. Um, and poverty levels were extremely high. Um, data from statistical service shows that um, about 23 districts had uh, poverty, multidimensional poverty, above 50%. Mm -hmm. And you find most of this in the northern parts of the country. So it is for me, a very challenging one. But also, looking ahead, we've seen some uh, improvement. Um, so, um, and then with the exchange rate as well, uh, we've seen some mm. marginal stability mm. in the exchange mm. rate. Because mm. that, that basically drives inflation. When mm. the exchange rate is depreciating quite rapidly, mm. it, you know, Kuta and the rest will tell you, mm. it makes business very uncertain, and mm. that creates a lot of problems. But mm. we are seeing some uh, resilience, we are seeing mm. some um, gradual turnaround. So hopefully uh, we'll see uh, more of this mm. in, in the first two quarters of 2024. Mm. Uh, but the last... Uh, uh, and Prof, I would, I, would, I would come back to you on the bit about the outlook because that is very, very critical. He says projection and all the rest. And also the impact of these uh, wrap of, uh, rough of uh, taxation it taken off next year and that's impact on inflation whether it could reroute all the gains that we made. So, Prof, please don't go hanging there. I'll come back to you on your 
your outlook on this. But let me bring in Professor Pepper as well, uh, a financial uh, economist, a lecturer at the university in USA. Prof, interesting times for you. And sitting outside, reviewing the economy, reviewing the financial space. For you, how would you describe 2023? Um, good afternoon to you and to my fellow panelists, and also good afternoon to the viewers. Um, it's morning here um, mm. at my end. Mm. <laughs> okay, so um, I mean, uh, for students of finance and students of economics, uh, we can see that um, if you want to test most of the models that we've learned in school, Ghana becomes a better, uh, 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 if you have options, Ghana becomes one of the countries that we can use as a case study. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at what happened in 2021, 2022, um, and then 2023, um, we could see all the economic theories that we've learned from expansionary economy to contractionary economy. Ghana is the best case to, to study. Um, the, the managers of the economy um, in 2020 to 2021 was focusing on expansionary um, projects. Um, they were advised that they should slow down. Um, they did not listen, and then they had to turn around. Maybe that's why they, they call it turning the corner to come to a contrastary um, economic um, issues, um, whereby they now need to focus on raising revenues and then cutting down expenditures. Um, if you if you pay attention very well, our GDP rate has been revised several times in 2023. Um, from 1.3 and then coming to about 1.2. Several um, bodies giving different kind of um, GDP um, figures, meaning that, I mean, this is the test time for Ghana in 2023. Um, it's, it has been a very challenging year. Um, I was in Ghana in, in June to July, and I realized that living in Ghana is very, very difficult. Mm. Um, prices were changing, transportation fares were going up, which affected so many things. Um, I know it has not stopped, uh, but um, the spirit of the Ghanaian is still there. Yeah. A lot of us are hanging in to survive. Um, whatever we need to do to, to turn around the economy, and that is a country that we all have, mm. um, and we believe in it. Um, talking about us also outside the country, we still have the belief that Things will get better in 2024. Um, the, foreign, the remittances will still be coming mm. because we know that um, our Ghanaians need the support that, that mm. whether being family members or mm. industries. Mm. We, we have a strong belief that mm. uh, the economy will, 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 will do well. Prof, a rude intervention. I want you to hold on and go. We will come back to that session when we do the outlook for uh, 2024. So this is just a quick one on how you describe this year. But let me bring in uh, Edward Akarawa, the General Secretary of the General Agricultural Workers Union. If you look at the sector, some are saying that quite a bumper production, GDP numbers were doing so good. Mr. Karawe, for you, 2023, could it be described as a good year for you, but the fact that we could have still done better Well, we are all participants of the economy, and uh, uh, 2023 is built on 2022. And uh, we all know that uh, in 2022, the economy was in shambles. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a struggle in terms of uh, trying to put ourselves together as a nation to secure the IMF deal. Uh, it, uh, everything came to a standstill. Uh, uh, all economic you know activities or um policies were aimed at you know securing the imf mm -hmm. uh low mm -hmm. so in natural fact um all that we did in 2022 was to secure the imf loan now so nothing really was done for the sake of uh pushing the economy forward mm -hmm. all that was done was to secure this now, if you look at the uh, 2023, and based on that, you saw that the benchmark, discounted benchmark value mm. was taken off in 2023 budget, you know, but by then, it had already caused so much 
uh, destruction to mm. domestic production. production yeah. In 2023, because we have now become fully under the IMF control, you know, the management of the economy shifted hands from our managers to the IMF. So anything that happened in the economy was basically to comply with the IMF conditionals. For instance, in 2023, we are government has not been able to uh, invest in uh, agriculture, you know, and of course, and, and it's understandable because government itself is broke and then you are looking mm. for money here and there. Mm. So government did not even have the money to invest mm. in agriculture. Um, government also, again, had no uh, leeway to support domestic producers, mm. apart from the direct investment in agriculture. Mm. Government has not got the resources. And then because of the IMF conditionality, we need to raise revenue. So the areas that government would have, you know, um, taken off on uh, domestic producers to allow them to become strong, government rather maintain the taxes on them. When in actual fact, at, at this stage of our economy, they need, you know, the government support. Those taxes cannot go off because we need to build revenue. So for 2023, um, we, one will say that agriculture will fight some bumper harvest. But you see, that is not as a result of policy intervention. Mm. In fact, the rains this year um, came in, uh, in proportions that was good for agricultural production. It is not because uh, there was direct policy intervention. Mm. We also know the planting uh, for for that for this for, particular year. Dr. Karawe, the, the planting for food and jobs did little uh, in, in turning around the, the agri sector or turning the corner for the agri sector? Well, for the 2023, there has not been planting for food and jobs intervention. In fact, it ended in 2022, okay. uh, the, uh, the first phase. So, the 2023, nothing has been done. It is all preparation about the uh, 2.0, that is the phase two of the plan for food and jobs. And we all know that because the plan for food and jobs has not been successful, the agricultural foundation has not changed at all. The structure of our agriculture is, is still the same. So, or even not worse, because it has not added to mm. building a robust infrastructure for agricultural production. So, and again, so government has shifted away from direct intervention now, trying to use the aggregator and the private sector uh, uh, model, which for 2023, government used that period to uh, develop that model. Mm. Government is hoping to now implement a phase two in 2024. Okay. So whatever gains we are seeking, we are experiencing in 2023, it's not as a result of policy intervention. Pension. It's just that farmers have to go to the market, secure their own uh, inputs, and then produce on their own. And then, uh, uh, fortunately, uh, nature has been charitable to them uh, to the extent that the rains have been uh, proportionate to what uh, is needed for them to produce. That's why you are experiencing uh, the, some of the good harvest. And it's because there's lack of policy intervention. That's why we are experiencing glad. As I'm speaking, I'm at Knob there, I've gone to the Fumbisi areas, gone all uh, uh, around. The rice is lining everywhere because there has not been any policy, you know, uh -huh. uh, arrangement mm. to to pick up this uh, produce. So, again, you can see that uh, 2023 is just, mm. uh, it's, a, it's a year that will go down the drain that government in recent years have done nothing uh, to support agriculture. Interesting submission. I'll come back to you on the bit about the article. But let me move to the industry, manufacturing sector. Sechuma Kabwa is chief executive of the Association of Ghana Industries. 2023, can we say that it was a good year for you because the last quarter we've seen the numbers show that manufacturing sector is picking up all. Still, the challenges do exist and you're not out of the loose yet. Uh, so Chuma Kabwa, Chief Executive of the Association of Ghana Industries. Well, thank you, George. Um, 
and uh, good afternoon to your viewers and Merry Christmas to all your viewers. Yes, thank you. And indeed, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. The year 2023 was an interesting one. Uh, last year, we had serious challenges. And, and as you know, latter part of last year, things were so bad that we could not predict anything. The CD was plummeting. The exchange rate situation was terribly bad. Uh, interest rates were so high. Debt exchange issues were on. So there were a lot of uncertainty in the system. And there were a lot of complaints all over. So this year, uh, even though we've had some stability, if you compare mm -hmm. to the latter part of last year, you know, the year we've seen some stability, and, and, and we thank God that we've managed to get throughout the year with reasonable stability in terms of the macroeconomic uh, issues. However, the challenges we faced last year actually uh, reflected in performance uh, in, in industry this year. And a lot of the companies we visited, most of our members we spoke to, really complained of lack of sales. Mm. Most of them didn't meet their sales targets. Wow. The latter part, probably, uh, we have to look at the numbers again and, 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 and then calculate it, do the analysis. But early part, the first three quarters, there were complaints about not being able to meet sales targets, some downsizing because of the challenges. I've visited a lot of companies, not just in Accra, but in Takwadi, in Tema, in Kumasi, and the complaints were basically the same. That sales have not done well. I think it's partly because purchasing power this year has not been that good for people. With the deep and, and fast depreciation of the CD and, and, and the inflation being so high, people's disposable income became very slow, very low, and therefore ability to spend was affected. And that has an effect on industries who are turning out goods for uh, sale in the market. So definitely, uh, when you have such a situation, sales are affected. And for industry, they are driven by sales. Everything they do, was on sales. If you make good sales, you can always quickly invest. If it's short-term uh, investment you have to do, you quickly do it and catch up and, and, and meet the market demands. But if the sales are bad, it affects every other thing. But in addition, there were also some policy issues that uh, one could also talk about. Uh, if you take the tariff, the water tariff mm -hmm. and the electricity tariff last year, there was significant jump when we did adjustment around September last year. So early part of the year, the companies, especially the beverage companies, have serious challenges with it. And I, I keep saying that within five months or so, one company accumulated a debt of about 10 million Ghana wow. cities, simply in, in respect of water tariffs. So it really had an effect. But in the course of the year, through our negotiations and uh, advocacy, uh, we managed to get it normalized. So by the end of the first uh, half of the year, we had seen normalization of the tariff levels. I must acknowledge, though, that in terms of electricity, there was improvement because uh, PRC actually stuck to the position that industry should not be made to subsidize residential uses. Mm. So there was a bit of reasonable adjustment in tariffs in that respect. Mm. But if you put, uh, put it all together, the debt exchange and its effect, some of the tax uh, handles that were introduced, if you put it all together, uh, the year was quite a difficult one, generally speaking, even though we've had some stability terms of the macroeconomic environment. I'll come back to you and get your thoughts about what we are seeing this last quarter and whether that trend could be sustained going into 2024. Let's talk about the hotel industry. Let me bring in uh, Dr. Akanyamike, who is uh, president of the Ghana Hotel Association, of course. Uh, December in Ghana, last quarter this year, and all the rest, could that uh, atone for all the challenges that we've seen in the first quarters or previous quarters? of uh, this year or still listen George this is just a flash in the pan help me out as and how you would describe 2023 in relation to uh, your industry right George thank you so much for the opportunity and uh, greetings to your panelists and of course your viewers and listeners as well George in a very short uh, term I'll say the year has been quite good Mm. with a number of positives and, of course, some negatives as well. Uh, but when you put them on a scale, I think the positives mm. outweigh the negatives mm. a bit. First of all, uh, getting to the end of 2022 into 2023, we were fortunate to benefit from the 10 million grant oh. from the Ghana Present Development Project. Uh, so a lot of the facilities benefited from from that grant, which enabled 
them to improve upon their facilities. And again, the same year, too, we've had a lot of uh, promotion when it comes to tourism. First of all, we had a presidential summit, mm. uh, which the president himself was there, and that gave tourism industry a lot of attention, which I believe is also contributing to international visits. Mm. And again, just about a month ago, we also had the investment summit on, on tourism as well. And right after that, there was an MOU on a $50 million uh, uh, dollar grant to mm -hmm. the industry to improve upon some mm -hmm. tourism sites. In relation to the grant tourism development projects, too, you saw the improvement of the Kwame Kuma Memorial Park, mm -hmm. which has increased a lot of uh, visits mm -hmm. to that particular park. Mm -hmm. And of course, you mentioned the December in GH. Mm -hmm. Mm. So when it comes to attracting visitors, both international and domestic, we are doing very well. And that's the positives. A lot of good goes into the positive. It is the business environment which brought in the negatives, which my colleagues have spoken about. So what I'm saying is that if we are able to, to deal with the business environment in terms of the cost of living, the inflation, and then the exchange rates, and some of the taxes which my colleagues uh, spoke about, then we will have, because you see, we are getting the occupancy. Mm. That's no doubt. We are getting it from the improved visits that we are getting. But when it comes to the cost of operation, when it comes to utilities, when it comes to uh, the exchange rates, then you put the figures together and you see that the profit margin it's getting lower and lower and that has implications for reinvestment mm. into the business mm -hmm. so Doc, quick, quick one Let, just a road intervention a again uh, as i was asking my 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 guest here in studio guta president about the december period maybe it might be early days yet but can we say that if occupancies have picked up so much can we say uh, so far so good or George, it's still early days yet George, in terms of how things have panned out for the hotels during the December? George, George, what we have observed is that the December in GH seems to uh, lean more towards the second part of December, okay, into the, the, the festivities, into the new year. So yes, between the 15th of December now and projecting into the first or two second week in January, it's been good. It's been good. Been Occupancy, good. sales, events, sleeping, and yes. all those things have been good. I'll come back to you. It's been good. Okay, I'll come back to you on sustaining this good trend that you've seen for the hotels when it comes to December and Ghana and the festive season. Doc, let me let me come back to you again. So for you as as traders, I mean, going forward again, we do see the taxes issues as one of your biggest challenge or the, the lobbying, the engagement has gotten the results because we've seen inflation slowing down and some would say that it also has an impact in terms of your cost of doing business. Yeah. If it was high, you pass on that cost to us. Yeah, yeah de de definitely. Um, you see, inflation is not even good for the trader himself. Oh, oh you don't yeah. pass on the cost to us? No, sometimes Obviously, become, we, become, become, we, we, we pay become, for that cost. Sometimes it becomes difficult for you even to pass it on. Mm. Um, because the business that we do, we do it with our customers. Mm. And then the ability to patronize our way is very important. Mm. So if their purchasing power has so gone down or mm. been eaten away yeah. by the inflation, yeah. it means that it's not helping you to... Um, increase your turnover. Mm. If you are not able to do that, it means also that you are unable to service your um, your your debtors mm. and all that. That have been our uh, our, um, mm. our bankers and then our, our foreign um, mm. suppliers. Mm. You see, so um, it's very important that uh, we work against that. You know, the inflation that we experienced um, was very dicey. Yeah, because matters. Um, the monetary policy rate is being um, um, going up. It means that it is not the panacea to solve mm. the inflation. But the Bank of Ghana believes that their policy rate uh, hike has contributed when they had to do the non-food 
inflation no. rate. That is what the Bank the, of the, Ghana believes the, that no. the highs had no. helped the bulk, drive down the rates down. The bulk of this reduction is as a result of the um, sustained um, stability of the city. I see. Because the um, uh, the so you think the city had contributed to the, has contributed to inflation coming and not because of the monetary measures that the Bank of Ghana no, no, has put no, 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 no. in. Because they claim they've sucked in a lot no, of money from this, the system and that has contributed to what you're seeing right now. This inflation was a cost push in inflation mm. and then the issues that make this cost mm. are still existing. Mm. We haven't reduced the um, uh, uh, duties that we pay, we haven't reduced the taxes that we pay so that's why... What is the situation at the port? Help me out in terms of clearance of goods and all the rest. Yeah, it has been very difficult because, you mm. see, during the last quarter of the year, GRA want to achieve its targets. Their targets. And so if they are really behind, then, of course, they will find always um, um, to make sure mm. that they achieve that. Mm. And this is exactly what happened to us in the last mm. quarter, that um, clearing of goods have become extremely very mm. expensive. Mm. Yeah. Let's come to the exchange rate issue as well. For you as traders, it was a big issue in 2023. We've seen some marginal stability as well. Is that helpful? Is that impacting on your business? Very, very much so. Mm. You see, uh, and then even the, the extent of the uh, how we have been able to sustain it, mm. that's the most important thing. Mm. And so you see, um, the reduction itself, is not very appreciable mm -hmm. that um, from 15.4, um, we started the year uh, the, uh, of 2022, mm. 6.4, mm. and then it went up to 15.5. It has come to 12, and then um, uh, there are 12, about, 0, 2, 12, 15, yeah. and all that. So those. it could have gone down. But then, uh, what makes businesses thrive is the, how the SM rate is sustained. Mm. How, um, the yeah, and for you, you so, believe that, listen, the Bank of Ghana and government should work hard to stabilize the and they, they have That to could work be the game changer. Also. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. Because it shouldn't be the role of the um, Bank of Ghana to fight inflation. No. It should be fought alongside the fiscal the side as policy well. uh, makers mm. because of the obvious uh, mm. reasons of mm. cost of doing business. Mm. That is not under the purview of the Bank of Ghana. Mm. That's why I try as they, they did. Because now... Um, inflation figures have come down, and you see that um, it, will, it should have trickled down, downwards the mm. prices and all that. Yeah. But it's very negligible. Why are we not seeing? Why are we not seeing traders pass on? Because I remember I had an interview with the MD of Unilever, and he gave that assurance that they have done some reductions, and if inflation or the the cost of production trend downwards, they will pass on that cost to consumers. Traders, why are we not? See, why are we not? Why, why, that's why, why are we not seeing you pass you know, on the reduction no, no, in no. the cost of purchasing these goods in holes and in the in the in the whole prices on the in, in bulk to us? When are we going to so see the, that? So the boss of the Unilever was not emphasizing on the uh, reduction of inflation. He, he was, talked about that. He was we talked about that. So when are we going to see Guta members also reduce their prices? He was emphasizing on the cost of production, which has gone down for and them. Then, so that if production goes down. Then the, the cost almost lies on, but you see, um, sometimes when they say prices have gone up, it's not scientific because no. The rate of increase has slowed. Slow down, of course. And of course, the cost of yes, which your members were buying, maybe a carton or maybe a dozen of maybe something has gone down. No. When are we going to see your members pass on that no. cost to us? Prices have gone. The uh, rate of increase has slowed. Suddenly, so are you suddenly. going to pass on that cost, that benefit to us consumers? That's what we do. And have you have you done that already? If you you don't have any option, than to so I, I, I want to get that clarity from rate. you. That have you done that? Have you passed on? You're you not going to do. When did this Otherwise happen? You cannot. When did this happen? No, because um, we've been able to sustain the mm. prices alongside the stability mm. of the city. Mm. Is is that true? Because if you uh, look at the uh, rate of increase. In last quarter of mm. 2023, it's yeah. not the same. Yeah. Prices fell, mm. and it have gone down, mm. and it have stab stabilized mm. yeah. at the rate at which the exchange rate is we, behaving. We, we, this that week, we've seen the city show some sustained stability or some marginal appreciation, and then also the inflation as well. Going into next week, the other week, are we going to see traders pass on that benefit to us? Yeah, well, uh, the benefit comes natural. Mm. And so that's why when somebody says that 
um, prices are going up. It's not scientific because mm. they do not bring an item mm. and then state the previous month's price as mm. against the new price. So on, upon what basis? So prices have actually um, mm. um, stabilized alongside mm. the stability of the city I'll because prices go... Um, with uh, the the you think that exchange the stability, rate. Exchange rate. Exactly. so if the exchange rate stabilizes further, are we going to see some reduction? Exactly, definitely. And that's a promise from you. And that's what we are. We've been talking about that cost of doing business. If it comes down, definitely it trickles. It trickles down a lot. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to you. The city goes to twelve or eleven to see whether it passes on that. Definitely. Country. Let me still talk we about. We don't have any option because we are in competition. Interesting. Exactly. So it is not in anybody's interest to increase prices. Mm. And that's why I said that when the uh, inflation was high, we even found it difficult to mm. um, increase. Interesting. You are another, you, let me tell you, mm. you see the AGI uh, boss yeah. was the uh, CEO, saying, uh, the CEO was uh, talking about their Sales. inability uh, to even sell. Because probably prices their, were high, uh, people couldn't buy. A production was very high and that people couldn't even buy their mm. waste. Much as people were even buying um, the waste mm. of the, um, the, mm. the, the local trader. Mm. I see. Let me talk about still moving to the economic space because I, I just quickly need to get the thoughts of Professor Peter Corte on this and then I'll come back and let's move into 2024. They are look, looking into the crystal ball and the expectation going into next year. Professor Peter Corte, I think one thing that we all cannot forget about in 2023 was the debt exchange program. And for you, do you believe that never again, we are done, we are closed, or listen, there is still a window where government could come back to us and say, maybe another round of debt exchange program? Well, um, let me just take it, uh, um, a few seconds to address a misconception before I address this, this point. You know, I, I would expect uh, it's my expectation that Bank of Ghana will have a communication department to explain their monetary policies and everything to uh, the ordinary Ghanaian. It seems like there is some misconception about what they do, and people do not appreciate all the hard work, all the good work they are doing. You see, um, if you don't mop up excess liquidity, people will use that. CD, SSCD in their hands to buy forest, to buy foreign exchange and store as a value. And that is going to put pressure on the exchange rate. So the monetary policy they are pursuing is also to help fight exchange rate depreciation and help fight inflation. But it looks like that, that transmission mechanism has not been clearly articulated, mm. in my view, to the layman's language. So sometimes people do not appreciate all the mm -hmm. work they're doing. Well, their work will become more effective okay. yeah, mommy, if the fiscal is also speaking to what they're doing. Unfortunately, we run huge fiscal deficits and that is generating a problem for the monetary sector to solve. I agree with the Guta president. Inflation is caused by several factors. Cost push, demand pull, you know, all the different structural issues. So you can't use one instrument to address yes, inflation. Exactly. But that does not mean that Bank of Ghana is not doing anything. No, no, no. <coughs> Sorry. No, come, now to the point about the domestic debt exchange. And, and, and uh, Prof. Peter, Peter Cote, just a, a quick uh, rude intervention, please. Uh, because uh, Dr. Joseph, I may want to make a quick comment and then I come back to you. Sorry, please. And Doc, you are trying to clarify okay. something here. Yeah, we, we do uh, sincerely appreciate the role of the Bank of Ghana. Mm. We had a meeting with the uh, governor himself. He explained. Um, the uh, role of Bank of Ghana and then the fact that they use um, the monetary increase tool. of uh, monetary policy rate to, as a measure to uh, fight inflation. And so we understand perfectly. But what we have also said is that they cannot do it alone. Mm. And that um, the accumulation of costs have also been um, the reason mm. of this inflation that we are fighting. Mm. So they have to do it alongside with the policy makers. Mm. And that's exactly what we are saying. Okay. And they are also uh, uh, playing their role as the international norm demands mm. of using that measure mm. to curb mm. excess liquidity. Back, Prof, on the, my question about the domestic debt exchange program, some will say that never again and all the reason. For you, that was one of the big things that happened this year and how it's impacted on people 
for you going forward, do you think that we've done what we have to do and we can close the chapter on it? Also, let's watch that space. Well, I, I don't expect another round, and I think the Minister of Finance has emphatically said it, that this is the last round. There's not going to be another round. Um, I don't foresee any subsequent rounds. What is now left is for the external creditors to agree and give us this assurance uh, for a comfort letter. And once that is done, they become very clear. Um, I believe other bilateral donors and other others who want to engage Ghana, uh, because we have had a long history of stability, economic and political stability. We have a maturing or mature democracy. Ghana is a very peaceful country. So every donor, every country, any good investor that wants to come to Africa will choose Ghana as one of the first options. That is why we are just waiting for this external creditors to come to some consensus, and then you find other bilaterals and other investors uh, coming on board. But I must say that this should be the last time. It is a very painful exercise, and I don't think anybody, any investor, will be happy to go through this painful exercise again. As we continue to borrow, especially now that we are borrowing more from the money market, treasury bills, etc., we are piling debt, and we should be cautious not to hit the debt sustainability threshold again, because that has had severe repercussions on the economy, and uh, we ought to guard carefully against this. Other countries are actually African countries are also marking time. Uh, just that, yes, um, Kenya is struggling. Nigeria Ethiopia. Is struggling. Ethiopia mm -hmm. is struggling. They've been downgraded. You know, so um, I'm happy that we've gone through this painful exercise, but we should never again uh, witness this. Kind of, uh, and, and, and Prof, quick one before we take a break and we come to our panelists again on the, the outlook for next year. Are you more optimistic now that in January we can close a deal and have something with the IMF board for the disbursement to come more? It is still a dicey situation. I'm, I'm still optimistic. I, I think uh, hopefully by end of January we should close this deal uh, mm -hmm. because we cannot continue um, this long dialogue forever. I think there should be some concessions from both ends so we close this deal. It's not, it doesn't augur well for Ghana, it doesn't augur well for the creditors as well. I mean, for Ghana, if we don't close the deal, there are many things that are hanging. We, we are not even servicing our debts. Mm. Um, the other investors who want to come on board, um, and because of this, they are, they are sitting on the fence. So it does not help anybody. It's not helping the IMF itself. It's not helping the World Bank. It's not helping the international community. So, uh, and, and China and, and all the bilaterals, I think it's about time they close this deal. And I'm hopeful that by end January, we'll strike that deal. This is the Business Review 2023. When we get back or we come back from this break, we'll be looking at the year 2024. The expectation of all our panelists and what we have to do to ensure that we don't repeat the mistakes of 2023. This is Business Review 2023. Yeah, enjoy business. A special programming as we review the year 2023. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome to Business Review 2023. As we engage our panelists, our economists, our business persons, our finance persons, on some of their top issues in 2023, but also we move into a very important segment of this program, the expectation for next year. What should we do to ensure that the mistakes, the challenges that bedeviled us in 2023 doesn't repeat itself in 2024? We are about two days or three days away into uh, next year. Professor Pepra, let me come back. Let me get to you on the outlook 2024 especially in the financial space. What should we look out for? Or what do you think has to be done to ensure that we actually minimize the shocks that we all experienced in 2023? Um, thank you very much. So I think that um, as we have all been mentioning, our exchange rate is a major factor that's caused us to get to where we are. And what brought this issue is our balance of payment mm -hmm. 
figure. Mm. We saw a drastic reduction in our balance of payment figure. So in 2024, um, the central bank and then even the government must pay close attention to strategies that we need to put in place to make sure that our balance of payment account increases or become a positive figure as against the negative figure we have now. Mm. Um, once you have foreign currency, um, it strengthens your, your your currency and then this issue of exchange, your currency devaluing um, and goes away. So probably the Bank of Ghana must look at the, the issue of how currencies are treated in Ghana, though it's an open market, uh, but you may have to pay attention to who holds what currency and for what purpose. Um, this is very, very important. Um, are people just um, investing, let me use the word, investing in foreign currencies, knowing that our bond market is no more um, that is one one of the major factors. So, and we should also be remember that the, we have stopped paying interest payment on our external debt. In 2024, um, government is going to if we get the IMF second tranche coming in, government is going to start making payments, and this is going to be a major factor. Um, the, so the strategy or the cash flow plan on a balance of payment must be well looked at. Um, I like the way the government is managing the situation with the BDCs because that is one of the areas. Um, there is a fight that the government must, must, must keep on with. The extractive industries. Now the government wants them to bring all proceeds into the country. Mm -hmm. So what strategies the government or Bank of Ghana put in place to ensure that all proceeds come into the country before they are disbursed. Mm. So it's a way that we, we will have to go by to strengthen our, our balance of payment. So mm. for me, in terms of central government approach, that is where the focus should be. Mm. On the company level, um, I, I, if, if I'm managing any company in Ghana, there are three major areas that you need to be all pay attention to with, uh, on our cash flow. Operating activity, investing activity, and financing activity. This is the time that all companies should focus or pay much attention to their operating activities. Um, when you focus more on your operating activities, you tend to collect your, 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 any, your receivables mm. faster and you find a way to delay payment to your suppliers. You, 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 you call it spontaneous type of financing. Companies, I know that may be slow in expanding. Um, and that is what's going to happen uh, in 2024. Major companies will not be expanding or investing into um, other areas because they want to stay afloat within the current um, situation. In 2024, I'm expecting profits should drop, not us in the past. Mm -hmm. um, all because of the, the coming in of the various taxes. And these taxes are going to um, impact businesses. And then there are some companies, I'm sure by the end of 2024, may even not pay dividend. They may roll over their retained earnings because of the impact of the taxation mm -hmm. uh, taxes um, that has come, come in mm -hmm. place. Um, so um, for me, um, that is my highlights and strategies that I think that on the I've talked about the government level, the mm. company level, and then on the individual level, I'm expecting that Ghanaians live within our means. Mm. Mm. This is mm. an election year. We may see a lot of activities, um, but for us to be able to stay afloat with these new taxes coming in, the strategy is let's live within our means mm. and then contribute mm. our wants. That's, that's what I want. That is an advice I think we all have to take it uh, going into 2024. But let me bring in Edward uh, Karwa, the agric sector. I mean, for you going into 2024, what are you looking forward to? Or how should we expect the sector to also contribute more to the economy? Your expectation, are we going to see things recover or still it is early days here. When I look at the GDP numbers, it excites me about how the sector is doing. Should that give us some hope going into 2000, 
and 24. Well, I, if you look at the agri sector, it's one sector that is uh, quite robust on its own. Mm. It's a robust uh, uh, sector of, uh, of the economy, mm. where even when there's no state intervention, it, it, it operates. Mm. Um, in 2024, uh, we are already experiencing what will happen in 2024. Mm. Um, the process, the produce, from 2023 will be the one that we'll be using in 2024, no. particularly in the per, uh, first quarter of the year. Okay. Um, that's what we are going to be using until we go into new uh, production season and then until harvesting around June, July, mm. uh, and then onwards. Mm. So, well, what could happen is that we expect government to put its house in place and be very clear about the level of investment they are going to make in the agriculture. What are they going to target on? Um, but one of the biggest risks to agriculture for 2024 and beyond is the extent of destruction caused by the uh, yeah, yeah. You know, they, I mean, it adds on. You know, every day, once you have the uh, LMC activity, more agricultural infrastructure is destroyed. So we are not even talking about what has already been destroyed by way of Galamse activities, but what will be added to it and uh, the compounding effect of that on agriculture, which I think government must deal with. Um, that could affect the co production, that could affect uh, oil palm production, it could affect rubber plantations and any agricultural activity mm. uh, 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 together. Mm. Now, when it comes to the food agriculture, which has a, a short-term gestation period, I don't know what government's inv uh, policy and um, investment policy is for now. For, for instance, the poultry industry, you know, is there an allocation to uh, bring back the poultry industry yeah. or what we already know, what has been put in the budget, which is uh, just a meager part of the necessary budget that is needed. So we just hope that the uh, uh, 2.0 uh, uh, policy, that is the phase two of the planting for food and just policy, will actually, you know, bring about resources uh, for the agricultural sector. Mm. And that must be done within the first quarter of the year, that is 2024. Otherwise, when it comes in too late, uh, the investment will be made, but the, it will not have the impact in terms of output uh, by uh, August, September, and so on. Mm. So it's not just about investment coming in within the uh, 2004 that it must be early enough and then for farmers to access it mm -hmm. and use it mm. but there's also something that is happening which i think that government must pay particular attention as i've come to the northern part of the country you you find out that there's rice that is imported from Kenya Faso, from the uh, uh, ivory coast and so on which is coming from india Wow. You, you know, uh, largely it's coming from India. And let me say that you you see that there's a recent glut, which appears to be a glut where uh, rice producers cannot uh, have market for their, their, their paddy rice. It's because anybody who buys that paddy rice and you process it or mill it and put it into 50 kilo, the cost of your rice will be far higher than what has been imported, imported. through Burkina Faso uh, and then uh, Cote d'Ivoire. So you see, so government must, you know, sanitize its uh, uh, monetary mechanism to ensure that one, you do not allow over importation of rice into this country. Two, if this importation is not passing through the normal channels, government must stop the smuggling of those 
uh, 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 rice and other agricultural produce into the country. Mm. So, 2024, if government is not able to deal with this, it matters not how much investment you put in into agriculture. At the end of the day, uh, you appear to have glad uh, farmers will lose almost 100 percent of their investment because they will not have a market to their produce. And again, we will tend to say that there's glad when, in actual fact, it is because imports have come in either through the wrong routes or have been given some tax exemptions and then they now become a dumping on the uh, domestic market. So what we are experiencing now, there's dumping of rice in the domestic uh, market mm -hmm. uh, imports, imported rice into the domestic market, do, do, uh, uh, taking away the market. Let, let me yeah. get your, your, your quick thoughts on food supply going into next year and its attended impact on food inflation or let me say, playing the technical jargon space, food security situation going into next year. How are you seeing things now? And as you spoke about earlier that, I mean, what we produced this last quarter will carry us into next year. Have we produced enough that we can assure ourselves that our food security situation going into next year, maybe first quarter, first half, it's okay. Or listen, it's still early days here that I'm afraid for our food security situation and its impact on food inflation. Well, the food security situation has to do with not necessarily about total production. It's also about our ability to preserve what we have mm. produced. Mm. Now, as we are experiencing now, the rice is lying in the sun and then it's uh, lying everywhere. And, and that's the situation uh, as we no speak matter. right now? That, that is the situation as we speak right now? That's wow. Yes, as we speak now. As we speak now. And then, uh, of course, I've just been to the fields and I'm just speaking with you. Okay. And so you can see that by next month, that same rice will not be available. It will either go to waste or it is taken out. So the food security into the uh, 2024 is precarious mm. in the sense that uh, you may find food within the system. Like I'm talking about the rice that is being dumped into the, uh, uh, the, the, the market. But you see, you need to have money to be able to access that. You know, those who have incomes will say that, oh, we can buy the rice and then use it. It, it matters not whether that rice is from uh, the local producers or imported. For the consumer, once he has enough money to purchase the right, then they will do so. But for the majority of the people who do not have incomes, because uh, they are not wage earners, or even if they are wage earners, they have so much responsibilities on their heads they need to uh, use their wages for, will end up not being able to buy enough. So food security is going to be a problem in uh, uh, 2024, more so, uh, you can only eat when you have money to buy. But we we are talking about a situation whereby we produce ourselves and we don't necessarily need to come out with money to buy to be able to eat. Mm. Uh, so for those people who have not got money, food security uh, is going to be so uh, uh, acute serious in 2024. Interesting analysis. Let me bring in Sir Chuma Kabwa. He is the chief executive Association of Ghana Industries. And for you going into 2024, what do you want government to do for the sector to ensure that the recovery that we are seeing, maybe it is sustained going into next year, producing more, pick up of the sector, sales going up and all the rest, Mr. Sir Chuma Kabwa. Well, thank you, um, George. I think that I must say that we are also quite optimistic for mm. next year. Uh, because we're judging from where we're coming from. Last year was a terrible year. This year, we've seen some stability, and we believe that if we're able to consolidate the stability, uh, we should begin to see some growth. Mm -hmm. uh, I was asked at the beginning of the year when stability started experience, mm -hmm. uh, I was asked whether we're going to see significant growth in industry, and I kept saying, hey, don't expect too much, because we are only trying to, at best, consolidate the stability we've achieved. Now, we've managed to end the year with some reasonable numbers, which are uh, uh, it's indicating stability. However, 
you could tell that he's still not out of the woods. Mm. If you're talking of policy rates of almost 30%, mm. uh, I think we are doing about 26, 27 yeah, or yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and, and, and if policy rates are around 26, 27, you can imagine that interest rates will be more than 30%. So the, the, the numbers are still quite high. Inflation, even though we drop significantly, uh, if you look at it in absolute terms, inflation levels are still high. Sure. Exchange rates, some stability, if we experience that, so if we're able to take that into next year, then that is good. So if you look at it, we are confident that the stability we've had, if we do the right things and put the right measures in place, we should be able to continue with that. And the fact that we still have the IMF with us, and we also know from history, Anytime you have the IMF intervention, during the period of the IMF intervention, some discipline yeah. is on us, and therefore we're able to achieve significant stability. So that is also quite assuring that as long as the IMF is with us, uh, we will be able to have that stability we need. And that is critical for our development. I can also tell that uh, I think some measures latter part of the year points to the fact that government is showing interest in, in supporting the productive sector. Because you've always made the argument that if you want to stabilize your currency, if you want to improve your exchange rate situation, then you must actually increase your local production. It is critical. And reduce your imports. Engage the traders to trade more in the locally produced items. But that is only possible if you are able to reduce cost of production so that your product becomes very competitive. Mm. And, and I could see some interesting measures from government. Uh, the attempt to introduce the import restriction, for example, is really an attempt. Uh, whether it will work or mm. not, whether uh, we are not discussing the merits and the merits mm. of it now. So but, I'm not but, but, but the, the, the indicating mm. that we, we, we government is interested in protecting and supporting local mm. industries for me is positive. Mr. Koba, uh, you made a very important point about traders also purchasing what is produced. And I think that I have the, the person here to get you a, 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 an answer right now. Guta members, are you going to purchase the, the, the products that the industries are producing? Uh, I know a search will definitely give you a punch, but... But uh, no, I mean, he's making welcome. a very passionate appeal to yeah. your members and traders. Yeah, well, but they should, uh, what they should know is that we buy all their goods mm. and then the shortfall is what we bring. We've said it over and over. So that is happening. Yes. Yeah, so okay. They do not sell their products. We mm. sell for them. Okay. So I don't know the issue that he's talking about. Okay. But uh, one thing that um, we, have, we have to ask the local industries. Now, benchmark values have been off the table for yeah. about two years. Mm. And it's not tracking down on their prices mm. of mm. goods. Okay. They should ask themselves, the, why is this so? Mm. Because going forward, we have to ask legitimate questions mm. from our local industries. Why they are not competitive, not even the outside the shores of Africa, mm. but within Locally. the West African Mm. Sub-region, mm. they are not competitive. But the system, the system is let, not let fair. Me, me There's a regulatory you, environment you that where imports are coming in, being knocked down, no, being smuggled no. in, and that is affecting them. No, let me let me ask you. Mm. Let me ask the local industries this question so that they will think through, mm. and with government and we all find solution. Mm. Why is it that we have Unilever here, mm. and then we have Coca-Cola here, we have the same companies in Nigeria? You know that most of the uh, Coca-Cola that people sell in the market, mm. they go to Nigeria and bring it from the same Is that a factor or ethanol That is also here. Or it's happening on it the It's Ghanaian. happening at this Christmas. Most because people go to the market and say they want the so you're, you're saying it, it is cheaper to bring it's it, cheaper. these knockdown goods these than what is produced in here. And the so cost of production is, locally is a big challenge. That is bothering us. Mm. And so they are not talking about the issues that is bothering industries. That's mm. unfortunately. Mm. They always dwell on uh, importation where import is necessary mm. to bring the shortfall of demand or even sometimes affordability mm. that we bring it so that um, um, the good people of Ghana is not overpriced. Let's ask why mm. the, um, the, the oil. Mm. This cooking is being, oil. Cooking oil that is being produced in Cote d'Ivoire and uh, Togo. It's being um, brought in, Knocked not down. smuggled in. Okay. Being brought in legally and then being sold at a far cheaper price than the oil that is being produced in Ghana. Mm. That's what we have to go visit there. Because I went to Nigeria um, uh, in their industrial enclave. You know they have a 
a huge gas pipeline that cuts across all the industries. So they tap in the gas to feed their Production. generators. And so their power is so cheap. Let's think through this thing so that mm. we become competitive and stop mm. um, this thing like the reduction of imports and all There's that. Let's, the let's to be the able challenge. to reduce the cost of production here. Let's talk through. And when the prices are cheap, nobody will waste his time to go and buy it from. I've cited cement as an example. Mm. Cement that is being produced by our own Jata cement. Cement that is produced by Gassem. Cement that is produced by Diamond cement and all that. We are patronizing. And mm. nobody even think about, apart from the, um, the other um, um, support mm. that um, Dango Taste Board uh, Cement is bringing in, nobody, mm. um, no distributor mm. across the mm. length and breadth of Ghana is bringing any mm. cement from China or what. So it's about our capability mm. to produce. Mm. And this, going forward, we have to think through this. Now let me tell you, um, uh, Taos, uh, Taos is very competitive mm. And people do not necessarily even go out there to bring their towels mm. because we have a very Cheaper. effective okay. um, towel manufacturing companies in Ghana. That's mm. real industrialization mm. because you do not have to overprice your, the produce of your industries. Mm. That one in the modern, mm. in the global world, you mm. cannot survive. Mm. Let, let me bring it to Marco, but I mean, it's a very serious, <coughs> interesting submission there that the problem is not about importation, the problem is about the cost of production. But George, I think this is a point you've made all the time. And any time Obin comes on air, he tries to give me a, a blow on that. A point but, as well. I mean, he, he, knows, he, he, knows, he knows that when we are talking about electricity tariffs, we are talking about cost of production. When we are talking about cost of finance, and I just mentioned policy rate being high, I talked about interest costs being high. When I'm talking about what, what does it mean? I talked about the value chains being effectively developed such that the raw material supply to the industries will be cheaper and then the, the logistics for moving them. So we talk about this is all the time. So anytime he talks and says, uh, we are not talking about the real issue and then we are only talking the, tackling the imports and all that, it's not true. These are the issues you and I have been discussing on a daily basis. So indeed we acknowledge that cost of production is high and we need to deal with it. But we must also acknowledge that some countries, by virtue of the fact that they are more advanced in a lot of things, they have a cheaper cost of production than us. I mean, if you take electricity, in China, it's about four to five cents. But, but Mr. Kabwa, just, just a rude intervention, just a rude one. I mean, Nigeria, Ivory Coast, Burkina Faso, and from what we are hearing, they are really not that more advanced than Ghana when it comes to more busy infrastructure. Yeah, People but, 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 are knocking but, but, down stuff but, but, from there and bringing it here into Ghana. So Same too. multinationals bringing it here, and they are way cheaper than what we are producing here. Yeah, but, but you should also know that we are also exporting quite a lot. How are, we able to, how are we also able to export to those countries? Every country deals in products that they have comparative advantage in. So bear in mind that much as, much as uh, some products will enter our market, we are also entering other markets. So it's not also the fact that we are only receiving Nigerian products and no Ghanaian product is entering that market. Mm -hmm. If you are not able to enter, there are sometimes difficulties with the, the protocols of entering these countries, restrictions at the border, and so on and so forth. So let's bear that in mind. Mm -hmm. uh, they, I mean, he talked about oils and all that. You know, the, the, the value chains have to be looked at. In, in, in Ghana, a lot of the raw material base for our oil producers, it is, it is produced by the peasant farmers. In Cote d'Ivoire, they have plantations. So those are factors. It's not based on the individual. So at the, at the production level, there's a limit to which you can control the cost because the input cost is higher. If you are being fed by a plantation, which is consistent, regular and reliable, programmed in a certain way, your cost of production will be lower. So those factors, we, we understand it. And that's why the likes of Wilma have uh, plantations, and it's never enough to feed the mm. factory. And they mm. even import some of the raw materials. So there are certain areas we, we are reasonably competitive. But then every country also has a responsibility to institute certain measures to protect its industries. Even in the US, they do so. In, the, in Europe, they do so. So where there are uh, import measures, uh, such as tariffs and all that, it's universal, it's international. We have to go by it and make sure that people adhere to it. Compliance level is good, so that uh, even if you are important, you are important under the right circumstances. And AGI members have never said they are afraid of competition. It's the unfairness that we always talked about. If you look at Tesla, for example, we mm. always complain about Tesla. 
the fact that you produce your design, you spend a lot of time and effort and money producing your design. In a few weeks, somebody goes to China and brings the same product. Yeah. Is it about competition? Is it about yeah. import? It's about unfairness. Those are the things we're talking about. Mm. Let, let me bring in Dr. Kenyamike and as we, as we try and uh, wrap up on our discussion. For, for the hotel industry, I mean, for what we are seeing in this last quarter, what do you want government to do for you going into 2024 so that the recovery is sustained? Or maybe let's just say like a plane, we are taxiing and it could be taken off very soon. Right, George. It's, it's not really about what we want government to do for us, but rather what we can all do to push the economy forward. And I must uh, set this premise that tourism has this huge potential to change the fortunes of this country, to change the economy of this country. We can look at it in terms of foreign exchange energies, foreign direct investment, in terms of employment, in terms of taxes, and even in terms of the ripple effects of the hotel industry. I mean, when you set up a hotel business, you can count not less than 10 other businesses that will be established okay. in line with that business, okay? So that must be established. And then when we establish that, the moving 2024, government should continue to promote Ghana as a destination of choice. And also we need to explore the huge potential in the mice industry, meetings, incentives, conferences, and exhibitions. We haven't done much there. When it comes even to the tourist, uh, tourist uh, uh, arrivals in the country, George, we are still moving around the 1.3 and 1.5, and the minister has uh, projected about 2.5 by 2025. Mm -hmm. yeah. We are nowhere near the 11 million that Egypt is doing. And if we are able to get even half of that, check how it will impact our industry. So the potential is there. Mm. And then also, we also want more tourism sites to be renovated. Just as we did the Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park. I'm sure you, you have the figures. Uh, from 30,000 uh, a month to almost a million a month. Just because of the renovation that was done. There are more tourism sites that can, that can bring in the, mm. this huge uh, revenue. And again, Government should focus on creating that friendly business environment. That is the job of government. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then yeah. we can also contribute our quota. Mm. But lastly, George, before you go, please, the media. You've done so well. You've done so, so well in promoting tourism. Okay. So let's have that partnership. Let the partnership. Recently, you were promoting Royal Cozy Hotel, uh, Safari Valley Hotel. These are the things that we want to hear. These are the things that will promote domestic tourism, it also promotes international tourism. Mm. So together, we can move the economy. The, 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 I, the, I'm always the, saying that we should model our economy on tourism. That's the way to go. The next one will be Dr. Nyamike Hotel. I will be doing that partnership yeah. very, very soon. <laughs> Let me bring in <laughs> Professor Peter Kote, because as we try and wrap up, I think I want you to have the last word on the economy as well. Two quick things in three minutes because of time constraints. For you, going into 2024, elections, is it our biggest challenge in staying on course, the fiscal thing? And how would these round of taxes that we are going to see take off in January impact on inflation that we are trying to bring it down? But before you do those two quick ones, Prof, and, and time is a big challenge for us. When I look in the English dictionary, it, it means that, yeah, signs of recovery. Prof, as an ESA director, as an economist, and all the rest over the years that you've taught us in school and all the rest, has this economy turned the corner? Right. Um, turn the corner, it is, it's quite a uh, tough one to say. I, I think uh, we haven't turned the corner. We are in the process. But I don't think we have turned the corner. It's more or less, if you say we turn the corner, uh, you say you have uh, recovered. Um, but we are on the path of recovery. So. Okay. I wouldn't confidently say we have turned the corner. Um, however, I would say that we, we have done quite well in, in you know, navigating the, the terrain, the very difficult terrain we found ourselves in. And I see 2024 to be more promising, uh, but, but contingent on us getting the second tranche, contingent on us 
get into an agreement with external creditors. If that happens, um, then certainly we're likely to see um, some stability on the exchange rate market. And that drives inflation, it drives a lot of um, activities on, on the business front. So if exchange rate is relatively stable, uh, we are likely to see some gains. Of course, the new taxes, as you mentioned, um, it depends on when it becomes operational. Here, GRA says they are now setting the system, setting up the system. So it might not kick off in January, maybe February or March. But as soon as it kicks in, we'll find costs going up. Uh, but if we also get stability on the share rate front, then the net effect might, might be maybe marginal increase or none at all, and inflation can be moderated. But then we have to watch the political business cycle. The last quarter of 2024 is going to be another challenging period if we don't put in the systems. In other jurisdictions, you cannot start a new project six months to elections. Yeah. You cannot spend beyond a certain threshold. I don't think I've seen those kinds of laws or you know being conditions being set in our country and it worries me if we are not careful the political business cycle will come and bite us again thank you oh, let, me, let me come to you uh doc for you 2024 having the last word your expectation yeah. what do you want to be done for traders and uh, the promise that if the taxes kick in you don't even rush to pass on the cost to us uh, doc. Yeah. Um, it's very important that going to 2024 mm. Um, we are guided by the past, mm. what happened in 2022. The stability that we are um, getting now in 2023 is very important for us, and that we need the sustainability of same. Um, you realized the perennial depreciation program that we have been here every last January, quarter, every, mean, every January yeah. to February. Yeah. So this is the time to, of course. Um, during that time, the masters of the economy are going, the Chinese and all that, they are taking all the, the chunk of their resources to go. How are we going to manage that? That's what my fears. So if you are not able to manage it well, mm. there have been the end of the year, mm. entering January where mm. Chinese are going for their holiday, and you know they control a chunk yeah. of our resources. For you, your fears, that the subjects uh, that we are seeing with the CD, the biggest so challenge is in January, February. Fe February. Mm. And that we should also do anything humanly possible to get the second tranche of the 600 million to uh, help bridge any gap that uh, this thing will create. Otherwise, if we, we also mismanage the, the stability and then we see the kind of depreciation that we, we had the last quarter of 2022, then of course we will be in trouble. And then also the VAT as it is structured. Mm. It's not helping. Now, going forward, we don't want to have any confrontation with... Aluta continue. Yes, and also, um, <laughs> that was, uh, that's also another measure of triggering the inflation that we are having. Because don't forget that since we changed the 3% flat rate in mm. um, um, uh, 2021, yeah. 2022, we started having this um, inflation that we experienced. Because we're paying 3%, just 3% flat rate, and then we migrated to 22%. That alone shut up the inflation. And don't forget the, the straight line of 6% that is not refundable and mm -hmm. all that. And that is also cascading. So if we, we are serious about tackling inflation, that's why I was saying that government should do it with, um, um, side by side with the bank, uh, governor of Bank of Ghana, mm -hmm. that we should be able to mm -hmm. also... Um, um, restructure mm. the VAT system mm. to help um, the growth of businesses. Otherwise, the cascading effect alone mm. on the VAT mm. is triggered. The, the bit about the taxes as well, whether we like it or not, it's going to kick in. If it kicks in and the cost build up goes up, you're going to pass it on to us? Yeah, definitely. Interesting. Yeah, the business, business people yeah, are not for the, for Christmas. the Christmas. And we, we, we based everything on the cost. So, mm. The increase in prices is not as a result of increase in our profits. Mm. The increase in prices is as a result of increase in cost of doing business mm. from duty payment um, to taxes that we pay through, through to the VAT mm. that is also cascading in the market. Mm. That's what um, caused the high rise of prices. Interesting. And then also uh, going into the election year, as um, Prof said, yeah. we have to manage um, our expenditure. Expenditure, discipline. And then a discipline, fiscal discipline is very important mm. because any time after in, um, elections, 
then you see that the shops the, uh, are uh, the, uh, look I, I indeed appreciate this has been our business review 2023 listen I appreciate your time prof uh, prepra uh, professor peter Korte, um that is uh, chuma kwabwa listen these distinguished panelists listen i, I know sometimes the time even we call you and put in your head 2023 we wouldn't have been here in terms of joy business without you guys out there in terms of immense contribution to our business program we say we salute you immense thanks if i can give a national award i think i'll present each of you with a national award for what you've done in terms of your contribution to our programming here at joy business for all of you out there immense thank you and also to doc for joining us in studio as a short notice you still managed to be done so that has been our programming for 2023 and we look forward to an exciting year in 2024 and see how things will be. Look out for us in terms of next year. My name is George Yafri. Together, all of us here at Joy Business, we say thank you so much and have a prosperous new year.